best of 2009. Here at figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. The top moments of the year. Number 50. How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Figure 4 Daily, Tuesday, November 24th, 2009, here at figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. As figured today, Juventud Guerrera is not going to be on the show, but... We have something even better. We have a man who has wrestled in Arena Mexico, a man who has returned from the brink of death. This is a hell of a lead-in right here. Buddy <laughs> fucking Wayne is on the show. <laughs> we couldn't get Hootu Guerrera, and I knew he'd, he'd be sitting home, so I called you. I, I wanted to talk to Hoovy about the School of Hard Juice. Talk to me? No, Hoovy, that's his new oh. wrestling school. Oh, his wrestling school? Yeah. Huh. I wanted to see if he's got a bunch of uh, goofballs that he's training right now and how he deals well, with them. Well, if he doesn't, I can send some his way. First off, before we get into everything else, how you doing? Lovely. You doing great? Yeah. I just uh, when you call, I was just getting ready to go back to the gym and do. I, I do two miles a day at and uh, at the gym, and I did a mile this morning. We do a mile just later on, and I'm just getting ready to go back and do a mile. I had, I had actually talked to you shortly after the surgery, and you mentioned that you'd gone to the gym. And at first, yeah. I I laughed. I was like, "Ha ha, it's a good one, buddy." Because no. you know, you you hear about open heart surgery, and you know, you assume the guy's just in a full body cast for yeah. six months. Yeah. And then, of course, I I showed up and saw you around Thanksgiving, and I was like, Jesus Christ, you'd never have known this fucker got surgery. And in fact, you're you're down well below two hundred at this point. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, the the uh, the surgeon. I was like, t- he told me he goes the first. He let me out. I was out of the hospital the morning of the third day, and he never put me on oxygen. And he said, "I'm just gonna, uh, you know, I'll, when you're ready to go, I'll let you go." And I was ready to go. I was like, "Fuck, I just gotta get out of this." Pl-. You know, I was sitting up in that chair and it was fucking my neck up. And and uh, um, he sent me home, so I went home. But I still I couldn't lift my my arms because of the. the I mean, the pain in your chest from that, you know, they, they they had my chest all the way open. So the pain in my, in the muscle in my chest and my, in my, uh, breastbone just killed me. So I couldn't lift my arms up. He told me that. He said, the first two weeks can be hell. You know, just like, uh, fuck, I'd taken a shower. I couldn't put a shirt on my head. Couldn't do nothing. Lift my arms on my head. And then I probably, I, I mean, I swear to God, like two weeks and two days, I woke up one morning. It, it had, well, maybe three days. It was like a Friday or Saturday morning. I just woke up and then all of a sudden just it was like it was nothing. And I lift my hand, I had my hands over my head. I had you know I can lift my arms. I can do the remote control. You know. Now for the first week or so, I mean, when you couldn't lift your arms over yeah. your head, I picture them just putting the the shirt over your head and so your arms are actually inside it and just your head is sticking through the top hole. No, I'd, I'd have to I'd have to put I'd have to um, put the shirt on and then try to lift my arms up it, so my hands wouldn't like go past my shoulders. Oh God! And put him in, and it, and he just kept, he just goes, man, you got to get a like a button up shirt or a robe. And he goes, I'm telling you, it's gonna be the easiest thing. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I just kept going. A tunic. Say hey, fuck. I was like, oh whatever, fuck. But I just did it. You know what I mean? But he was right. He was he was he was like, it's gonna be painful, and it was, it was painful because it was scary. You know, you, I kept thinking, I'm gonna lift this arm, and I'm gonna break something in here because it, my chest was held together. It's all wire, right, on the breastbone. Yeah. And then uh, I just, I, like I said, that that second or third day, I just, fuck, it was like nothing. I started lifting them, and and I was still afraid. You know, it was like a weekend, and I, and I couldn't get a hold of him, and I was afraid. And then I had to go in on Wednesday, the exact the third day, the third week, excuse me, to the day of the surgery. And he just goes, I went in, and he goes, what's, he goes, is there any, do you have, he goes, he couldn't believe it. You know, just like walking, no, nothing, you know, but he, he just goes, is there anything, you know, Anything that worries you, anything blah blah blah, and, and I said I want to go back to the gym, you know, just do something. I'm sitting, been sitting in the house for two and a half weeks, and he just goes or three weeks, and he said uh, go, and I said, can I now? And he goes, yeah. And I said, well, I got to drive, and he goes, no, you can drive now. He, I could, cause I couldn't drive either. Yeah, you can drive. I fucking, we drove home, and I just drove straight down, and it worked out. And he told, you know, he said he goes. uh, I'm going to tell you no more than three pounds, you know, in, in each hand, which he was right, you know, but uh, just go, go, you know, and, and you'll know when you've had enough and don't go past it. And 
it was perfect. I was just man, three pounds. Now, now, didn't you talk to a nurse and and you you'd expressed some concern about this chest thing, and they basically said your chest is wired shut, and it would take an impossible amount of stress to to crack that thing open again. Yeah, because of the wire. If you, they showed me the the X ray and uh, the wire, the way they have the wire loop through your breastbone, you know, like it looks like a uh, shoe laced up. And they show you the they show you the wire there. They they show you how much it how much pressure you know like how much it would take a take a ton, but don't mess around. Sure. You know don't don't okay don't think you're you know and you're not you know you can't when you can't lift your arms that muscle so so tender and and but finally when I went to the gym it's just like you know nothing wasn't you know Mr. Olympia workout or nothing but it was uh, just great it was just you know I mean just that feeling just getting back in and I was already doing a mile a day since I got home on you know on the treadmill and, and I was doing a mile and then he said, uh, a week I called him and told, you know, God, I couldn't believe this. And he goes in, and if you can go more than a mile, do it, but and don't kill is, yourself. This you is know? walking, of course. Yeah. Walking. Don't, don't, don't kill yourself. And I said, okay, mile, a little bit more, you know, more than a mile. And then I, then I moved up to the elliptical trainer and then, uh, that's where I've been at just uh, two miles a day. And, and, uh, just trying to make it back now. So now, when you were, we talked a little bit about before you went in, and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, you'd kind of decided at that point. At first, when they told you open heart surgery, you were you were not happy, and they yeah. told you the one in twenty thousand odds, and <laughs> I think you said those odds aren't good enough. Yeah, but then after a while, you started to realize that you know this shit happens every single day. Yeah. Now, now, when you were about to go under for the big operation, were you thinking? I mean, what percentage chance were you giving that this was it? Very high. Really? I, just, I was the one. You you figured you were the one. Yeah, because you know, I just I thought, here we go. I'm gonna be that one where they go. We can't believe that guy went. Yeah. You know, oh, gee, you know, or some or something happened, and I and uh, we drove up that morning. I was there was like three of us. There was like three people in the waiting room that had people in there in the for surgery, and then uh, me, Sean, and Richie Magnet was up here. Yeah. And and uh, it's six in the morning, and we're all just sitting there, and I'm like, wow, well, this is it, maybe, huh? We're just sitting there, like, well, what do you do? And then the lady just walked in, and she goes, you ready to go? I said, yep. Say goodbye. And I was like, holy God, this is real, you know? And okay, goodbye, you guys. And what a wonderful thing to have you say, goodbye. Yeah. No, she, she goes, he'll be back out, and she started like, she's kind of, you know, like now, nah, you know, it was, okay, say goodbye. I went in, and the guy started shaving my chest. And he's putting these different things in my arm, and he, he ended up putting one on my neck, uh, a pain tube into my, you know, where they could just pump you full of everything in your neck, and putting stuff in, and he's talking, he's talking, and, and so I'm just like, I'm getting kind of getting more scared. You know, you know you're getting closer and closer, and all of a sudden, it just I was out. Yeah. It was like, there was no, like, you know, okay, we're going to count you down here, you know, and he just went, yeah, and blah, 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 talking, and he goes, man, you, you're in good shape, but, and that's the last thing I remember him saying was, I, I, you know, hey, you know, you're, God, you're in good shape, though, don't worry, but, and bam, I was out, and I woke up, and the, the doctor had Sean in the room, she was taking a picture on the camera of me, I was just waking up, you know, with the fucking, the cut down the chest and the whole thing, and he was letting her take a picture. <laughs> I actually think I, she, she sent me one of those on the, on the camera, and I was like, holy fuck. Wow. Yeah, like death. This is something else. Yeah, but they, uh, I was all right. They just uh, let me sit up, and then I was up. Wa- I, I walked probably a couple hours after I was up. I did hear that, yeah. Just once the the stuff wore off, you know, and then I was up walking, and then, um, man, I was just I was rolling from there, you know. Just I just want to get out of there now, you know. Yeah. But their whole thing was, we just got to make sure you can walk. You're gonna you're gonna be fine. You know, you're you're not too groggy from the stuff. And there's no. I had a tube in my chest that was draining, so they want to make sure that was okay. And then the the morning of that the morning of the third day, uh, Saturday morning, he just walked in and goes, "I oh, can go." You're almost biblical in the telling of the story. On the morning of the third day. On the morning of the third day, I uh, no, because he just you know what I mean, man. I never this shit's just too much, you yeah. know. You had the back thing, and my neck's messed up, but there's none of this stuff. Your heart, man, that's, I mean, like, to me, the heart and your brain, you know, when they told me the heart thing, they shut your heart and your lungs down during the surgery. Yeah, you're basically almost dead. Yeah, he said, the machine's going to keep you going, you know, <laughs> and I go, and me, I'm like, you know, someone's going to trip on this cord and yank this thing out, or a power's going to go, something's going to happen. Sure. And he goes, this is going to keep you going. I was like, okay. When I, when I woke up, I was like, I didn't realize, I mean, I knew it had happened, but I was like, no pain, like nothing, you know, other than just kind of groggy. But when I looked down at my chest and I saw, you know, the scars, what's it got to be, five or six inches or something like that, 
you know. And the drain thing, I was like, wow, but it's over, you know. Yeah. So it was like, uh, you know, man, you know, and then uh, that was it. Then th- the third week, I was back in the gym, and and then a couple days after that, I went. There's the, uh, the team of the cardiologists. All these guys are like my age to fifty. They're young guys. Like one guy had an earring in, hair in a ponytail. The dude bleach, you know, it was hilarious. It was because the guys were smart, you know. But they're like, we understand what you're saying. They totally under, you know, understood everything. And, and uh, the one guy goes, listen, you're going to go over here and they're going to set your because I'm on that blood thinner, you know, for the you're on for the rest of your life. But he goes, they're going to tell you this, they're going to tell you that. Keep doing what you're doing. You're not doing nothing wrong. He goes, they're trying to make their job easier. Just stick with what you're doing. He goes, I'd tell you if you weren't doing something right. Okay, and then I go next door, and the, sure enough, the lady says, okay, not too much protein, blah, blah. You know, she's, yeah, I got my protein powder with me, everything's showing her what they want to see what, what I'm eating and what, and not this, 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 and and uh, that was it. He goes, keep, just keep going. So I go in every week and just get my um, uh, blood check twice a week, and that's it. Number 49. So we were at the zoo. And uh, I did, in fact, see a donkey. I was there, and Cliff and Carlos were there. Carlos has just turned six, and Cliff is now eight. Wow. Both playing little games, baseball and that sort of thing. I actually went to a baseball game. That's another story entirely. But So anyway, I'm at the zoo with these two, and uh, I'd given Carlos his birthday present. I'd asked him, what do you want for your birthday, Carlos? And he said... I want a Monsters vs. Aliens shirt or a hula hoop. <laughs> okay. All right. So I got him a hula hoop. I thought so. All fine and dandy. I couldn't find the the T-shirt. So we're at the zoo. We look at all the animals. We go in the bat house. We uh, The bat house, not the bath house. And we're looking at all these little creatures and that sort of thing. And it's finally time to go. Now, my mom had rented a stroller for the uh, for the buggers to sit in if need be. Or or to to house different things that we had brought. We had a lot of of food and such because Carlos just never stops eating. So we uh, we're about to leave, and my mom goes to put the stroller away. And by the way, my mom has not heard this story yet, or his granny. They are hearing this story for the first time. They will likely be slightly appalled. So my mom goes to put away the stroller, and I'm standing there with Cliffy and Carlos, and there's a big rock. And they like to get on the rock and, and try and shove each other off. So they're on the rock, and they're they're dinking around. And, and all of a sudden, I look up, and I, I, in fact, see two donkeys. There's somebody leading two donkeys to another exhibit. I guess there's like a petting zoo at the at the zoo or whatever. You can go in and pet the donkeys. So they're, they're, uh, they're transporting these donkeys, and the kids aren't paying attention. So I say, Cliff, Carlos, take a look at that. There's an animal loose in the zoo. And they look at the donkey and their eyes grow wide. And Clifford looks at them and he goes, it's a donkey. It's an ass. So I'm like a 12-year-old kind of thinking (laughs) he said ass. Right. Giggling in my head. Sure. So Carlos just kind of looks at him. (laughs) And Clifford says, it's an ass. And Carlos still has this confused look on his face. And Clifford says, an ass only refers to a donkey. (laughs) So I kind of, I didn't want him to go nutty with this. So I'm like, Cliff, you got to be careful when you say that word. And he kind of looks at me funny. And he looks over the donkey and he starts going, look at that ass. Look at that ass. (laughs) As he's saying this, as God is my witness, the zoo is starting to close, so there aren't a whole lot of people left. As he's saying this, who walks by but a 21-year-old girl in Daisy Dukes? So Clifford's going, look at that ass. Look at that ass. And I'm going, Cliff, you can't say that. If you say that too loud, someone's going to look at you and think you're talking about their butt. And he starts to giggle. And... uh and I kind of turn to my side, and the girl is staring at him. <laughs> and she kind of keeps walking. <laughs> and I'm trying to explain this to Cliff. And as, I, as I'm explaining that she's gonna, people are going to think you're talking about their butt, she's giggling and looking at him. And I had to turn and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she goes, it's okay. 
and walks off. Now, the whole point of this is she walked by long after the donkey had passed. So all she saw was this little fucker on the rock going, look at that ass, look at that ass, and she walked by in her Daisy Dukes. I don't know if I've ever been quite so embarrassed. I told Tony the story, he howled with laughter. <laughs> He's probably proud. He was. He said, Cliff has a way with the ladies. Yeah. And I said, oh yeah, that'll yeah, that'll one, be a great one in a couple of years. The key to this, Brian, is she giggled and she thought it was funny. <laughs> well, apparently she, she slap did. him. I wish. She shriek. This was just one of those moments that I just wish I would have had it on tape, or I would have had some way to to just have this. Well, it will be kind of burned in my memory forever. But just the timing of this was like it was like straight out of a comedy film. Sure. Like somebody listening to this right now has to be like a some sort of, of screenwriter, and they'll put this into a movie someday because this was just so fucking perfect. It, it could it wasn't it wasn't like a mom that walked by. It wasn't like an old lady. It wasn't like a dude that walked by. It wasn't like nobody was there. As he said this, the only fucking person in the world who possibly could have fit this bill walked by at that exact moment. So, God loves asses. What can I say?